major points, if you're going to strengthen your marriage this morning, if you're going to have a good relationship, and even for those of you that are not married, or you're single, or you're dating, or you're engaged, you still need to listen to this, because if you're heading in that direction, you'll need to know this before you get there. It would have been good for us to know a lot of things from God before we actually entered into his covenant relationship, amen? I know there was a lot of things that I didn't know when I did it, and I paid the price for it. <laughs> So, so, so it's good for us to know these things before, before we get there. The first point that I want you to understand this morning, if you're writing, you've got to understand, number one, that your marriage must be your priority. That your marriage must be your priority. It is a priority. It, it must be your priority. Where do we get it from? We get it from the very first part of Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 24. It says, that is why a man leaves his mother and father. Stop right there. That is why a man does what? He leaves his mother and father. He leaves his mother and father. What is that a picture of? It's a picture of departing and disconnecting from something to pick up a priority in another place. You are disconnecting from the most, one of the most important relationships that you had before your marriage and you are now disconnecting from mom, you're disconnecting from dad, and now you are picking up a new priority, which is your marriage and the mate of your marriage. The person leaves because they're changing priorities. And marriage is to operate as the most important priority in your life next to God. So God being number one, and the next after that is your marriage. So, so when you put marriage in a different position than the number two slot, get ready, it's about to fail. You can't move marriage outside of its priority slot where God has placed it. Now, sometimes we want to put marriage, you know, uh, below work, or sometimes we want to put marriage uh, below the kids, or sometimes we want to put marriage below the hobby. Whenever you move the marriage relationship away from the priority that God has already established, you are setting yourself up for failure. For failure. When mom and dad used to be the priority, now your spouse is the priority. When you say leave, because I know that sounds harsh, right? That a man must leave his mother and father. It is not abandonment. It's simply changing the priority. It's relinquishing the highest human commitment from parents to spouse. To spouse. Do you want to know something that's very interesting about God? God is jealous. Think about that for a moment. Pastor, that doesn't sound really good that you would literally say that, that God is jealous. Yes, God is a jealous God. Whenever you and I think of jealousy, we think of being envious of someone who has something that we don't have. And I know that sounds weird to just think that God is jealous, but we must first understand the biblical, what biblical jealousy actually means. I'll read you a verse. It'll come up on the screen for you. Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. It reads like this. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. I'll show you another verse in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. It says, do not worship any other God for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. You probably didn't know that about God, did you? Well, the jealousy that's described here in scripture, the jealousy that's described in the Bible is not the kind of jealousy that you and I go through in our emotions on a day to day basis. God's jealousy is different. His type of jealousy is not sinful. It's actually appropriate. It's appropriate. It's appropriate jealousy because what God is saying is, I don't want you to worship something when your, your worship rightly belongs to me. That's why he's jealous. He's saying that worship should never go. If you look back at verses, 20, uh, uh, verses 4 and 5 of Exodus 20 and Exodus 34, it was all about him saying, don't give your worship to anybody else. 
Don't give your worship to any idol. If you make an idol of something in heaven, if you make an idol in something on earth, if you make an idol of something in the sea, don't give your worship. Your worship, because I created you, God said, belongs to me. So because of that, this is what's called not a sinful jealousy, not the kind of jealousy that you and I feel, but this is what's called a legitimate jealousy. Because God is saying, I created you. I created you for worship. You used to worship me. And when you begin to worship something or someone else, I am, it is appropriate for me to be legitimately jealous because of what you're doing. I'll give you a really good example that I'm pretty sure all of you can relate to. I'm going to talk to all the ladies this morning. Ladies, if you saw your boyfriend or your fiance or your husband talking to another woman and she's flirting with him, touching him and rubbing her fingers through her hair, through his hair, right, and putting her hand on his leg and rubbing his leg, would you get jealous? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have the right to get jealous? Absolutely. It's legitimate jealousy. Why? Because an affection that solely belongs to you is now being given to someone else. Well, it's no different with God. The affection that we have for God should never be for anyone else. And so when we put priority in our relationships, when we put priority in our marriages, what we are saying is number one is God. But apart from God, the number two slot belongs to no one else but to my spouse. Because that's who God gave me. That's who God put me with.